That coming up. First, we begin tonight a shocking new development surrounding, yes, Hillary Clinton. The Hill's John Solomon just reporting that the case surrounding her illicit server might not be settled. Now, remember in 2016, James Comey and his FBI, they failed to grant investigators access, we learned tonight, to highly classified information that we now know was critical to their case. They had it, he failed to give it to them. In other words, agents were tasked with investigating Hillary Clinton, but they weren't allowed to see key pieces of damning evidence. And it appears tonight that the rigged investigation was far more rigged than we ever knew. And what that means is the so-called criminal probe into Clinton was a con job. It's now more obvious that the investigation was rigged from the very beginning. Under Comey, McCabe, Page, Strzok, Obama's AG, Loretta Lynch, they were never, ever going to bring any charges against Hillary Clinton, never. She absolutely got a get-out-of-jail-free card. And if you don't believe me, well, if you ever have your email subpoenaed, you go right ahead. You delete them. You acid wash your hard drive, and you destroy your phones with a hammer and remove the SIM cards. Good luck with that. Or maybe try lying to a judge one day on a spectacular level using Russian lies. Or maybe try spying on innocent people one day. Try that, and good luck to you. Because if the people that did all of this are not held accountable, we might as well just shred the United States Constitution, because this will be the banana republic states of America. And that's not going to be good. One system of justice for the powerful, the connected, and one for the rest of us. Now, it appears tonight the level of commitment to protect Hillary Clinton and take down Donald Trump was real at the center of all of this with these people in power in the Washington swamp. They called it Operation Crossfire Hurricane against Donald Trump immediately after sweeping the Clinton matter under the rug. And we'll give you the details. After rigging her investigation, details coming. Well, Comey's FBI then embarked on an intensive witch hunt. It's all true against Donald Trump. They spied on his campaign with multiple undercover operations. They tapped into his staff communications via a fraudulent FISA warrant, Russian lies, and they outsourced and coordinated spying to our allies, their intelligence agencies, all to circumvent U.S. laws, all in an effort to dig up any dirt possible on Donald Trump and help elect the candidate that they just saved from indictment. Then they used that candidate's bought and paid for Russian lies to try and remove a duly elected president after he won, in spite of all of their efforts. That's their insurance policy. Now, tonight, the question is not whether or not any of this is true. It's all true. We have real evidence to back all of this up. The question tonight is whether or not we will have in this country equal justice and equal application of our nation's laws, or will the powerful, the most powerful, will the lawbreakers get a pass, just like Hillary Clinton was given a pass? Will she still continue to get that pass? In this great republic, we're to survive as the great republic we are, this type of politically motivated two-tier justice system, it can't stand. It must never happen again. The only way you're going to prevent it is to hold those people accountable. And I cannot, in full confidence, tell you tonight that everybody that deserves to be held accountable will be held accountable. But I can tell you with 1,000 percent confidence, all of this abuse of power and corruption did occur. And there's all the evidence anyone would need to see it. But sadly tonight, I must report that the new FBI director, for some inexplicable reason, Christopher Wray, is now stonewalling the investigation into the investigators every step of the way. That is not a good sign for cleaning up what I have said, and I have an FBI pin right there with the American flag, is the premier law enforcement agency in the world. Here with more on his breaking news report, investigative reporter, executive vice president of the Hill, John Solomon. So I'm reading your piece. We had critical, crucial, key information, and you can even point to yeah. where we could find it. Yeah. And Comey did not allow his investigators access to it. Why? It's an unclear answer, whether it was a blunder or an intentional effort to bury evidence. We don't know the answer to that. And what's disturbing about the fact that we don't know the answer is that the inspector general, Michael Horowitz, identified this failure in the Clinton email case a year ago, a year ago. We've had two attorney generals since then, Jeff Sessions and now Bill Barr. We've had Chris Ray in charge all that time. 
And despite numerous letters from Senators Grassley and Johnson, the Justice Department has yet to respond to let us know whether even now, after the fact, they went to look at this evidence that, that the FBI agents themselves said was very important for them to see before they finished the Clinton Ask you. email case. The attorney general was asked by Senator Grassley, and, and you point this out in your column in his confirmation yeah. hearing, whether or not he would yes. give a written report. So where does yep. that stand that was at this eight months hour? ago. Yep. Uh, there's been no response. Crickets to the uh, Senate. And again, the American public are left in the dark, and it, it creates that perception, as you okay. rightfully mentioned, uh, Sean, explain, of the dual system of justice. Explain the nature of this evidence that they had right at their fingertips, and they didn't allow investigators to see. Yeah, we can only get a little glimpse of it from the descriptions in these letters and correspondence that I was able to look at. Uh, but it appears to be highly classified information, possibly some of copies of Hillary Clinton's emails or people who looked at them or other evidence of communication around Mrs. Clinton's email server. It is highly, highly classified. So classified that some members of Congress, even though they have high levels of classification, couldn't see it. Only special people could go into a specialized skiff. So whatever this is, is highly, highly sensitive information. Let but me... the FBI should have saw it three years ago. All right. That has to be gotten to the bottom of, John. That's, that's, a, that's pretty yeah. serious. It's, it's um, extraordinary. Right. Lindsey Graham said that the IG report on FISA abuse will be chilling, and then he said Horowitz will come to his committee to testify, get all the that's time right. he needs, tell the country exactly what happened. It will be in public. They will do as much as possible in the open. Uh, now the question is, okay, if, in fact, based on your reporting, that right. they were all warned that the dossier was dirty, it was Russian lies. Then later we find out the FBI mapped out 90 to 100 percent was false. Uh, right. But it was the bulk of information to obtain the warrants to spy on the president, his transition team, and then presidential candidate. The question is, if I lied to a judge, if I had a premeditated fraud before a judge and I was warned it was a fraud ahead of time, multiple right. times, um, yep. would I be going to jail? You absolutely would. And uh, the question remains, will those who in, were involved in this case face the same form of justice? What I can report tonight is that the IG has completed You agree completed with me? I'd go to jail, right? You'd agree Sean Hannity would go I, to jail? Yeah, and I would, too, and I would expect to. Listen, if I did those things, those are criminal in nature. So what I can report tonight, Sean, is that the IG has completed his work on the FISA abuse report. It's expected to be transmitted as early as next week to Attorney General William Barr, and that will begin a process of declassification. Uh, and uh, we're, I think we're still on track for that timeline I've been saying on your show. Mid-September mid to early October seems the most likely release point. All right, John. Uh, and, uh, and it's going to be a tough report. John Solomon, investigative reporter, thank you. Now, for years, Judicial Watch, they have used the Freedom of Information Act suits to chip away at the Clinton server scandal and get closer and closer to the truth. Today, they made some very real progress. Here with more from our Washington Bureau, our own Catherine Herridge. Catherine. Thank you, Sean. This afternoon, after five years of litigation, the federal judge here in Washington gave Judicial Watch virtually everything they asked for. And according to this court order, that means additional discovery and witnesses. Based on new information, two key witnesses could be under oath again. The judge gave attorneys for Hillary Clinton and her longtime aide Cheryl Mills 30 days to oppose the depositions about the former Secretary of State's unsecured personal server for government business and the mishandling of classified information. According to Judicial Watch, D.C. District Court Judge Royce Lambert said earlier discovery in the case only raised more questions about Clinton's personal email setup, efforts to circumvent Freedom of Information Act laws, and the judge wants more information about a Gmail account set up to archive the Clinton emails. The judge was aware of Senator Grassley's efforts to learn more about the email account, and this is significant. That address mirrors the name of a Chinese company. The judge told Judicial Watch to, quote, shake the tree on this issue. Judicial Watch also reports tonight that lawyers for the Justice and State Departments oppose their requests for more records, Sean. Catherine Herridge reporting in Washington tonight. Thank you. Now